right, uh, teachers, thank you so much for joining us today in this very current session of balancing the ingredients of planning and teaching with technology. Um, this session will be in charge of these two amazing teachers, Jasmine Mena. She's an Ecuadorian passionate English teacher who has experience teacher with kids, teenagers, and adults throughout her working life. Uh, currently, she works with young adults at university in Ecuador. She believes in edu she believes education is the key to have a fairer and kinder society, and that is the reason why she is an educator. And also we have Caitlin. Uh, she's been teaching languages for 15 years. She now spent her time contributing to the professional development of new and experienced ESOL teachers in a variety of programs in the United States and around the world. She believes education is power and works towards empowering humans to be learners and learners to be human. So without any further ado, I will leave you these two amazing humans. Let's start with our session. Thank you so much, Anna, and welcome everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today to present with Jasmine about this case study of success that she actually has had, and we had a bit together in her classes in Ecuador Habla Inglés. So before we get started, I just wanna let you all know that we will be happy to answer questions. We ask that you please drop them into the Q&A, and we'll actually be pausing in the middle of our presentation to answer questions, and then we'll also have some time at the end. So please don't hesitate to put your questions into that Q&A. Uh, just to give a little bit of background on the, the program Ecuador Habla Inglés, which is how Jasmine and I met and how we became colleagues. Um, we interact virtually. It is a virtual program, as most things are these days. And maybe you heard a, about it a little bit. We had colleagues present earlier this morning, too, from the program. But essentially, it's a program in Ecuador, and it's a partnership between the two countries, Ecuador and the United States, really trying to make a difference in public school education in Ecuador, um, specifically English education and teaching. So Jasmine is one of our amazing teacher facilitators in the program. Um, most of the teacher facilitators work in the public school system. They already have a B2 or higher level of English, and they all share a common training as well in communicative language learning and reflective teaching. And these 33 teacher facilitators are teaching their colleagues, other uh, English teachers in the public school system in Ecuador, they're teaching them English for one hour, Monday through Thursday. And the levels of the classes go from A1 to B2, and we're really looking to help Ecuadorian teachers reach that B2 level of English, as well as experience what a learner-centered class is online and experience using the Ministry of Education materials that Ecuador provides to the public school teachers. So that's a little bit about our program. Um, as you can see, the students are adults because they are teachers themselves. But we'd love to know from you all, what ages do you teach? Uh, what is the language level of your students? Go ahead and share that in the chat. Let's see, are others teaching adults? Are you teaching adolescents? What, who are you teaching right now? And what language level? Please feel free to, to open your mic and, and share with us or write in the, in the chat as Caitlin is saying. Uh, Susan says she's teaching adults. Um, I teach well, teenagers. I can, I can say <laughs> that I teach teen, teenagers and adults from different levels, but I stopped working at the Ministry of Education before the pandemic. So right now I'm just working as a freelance teacher in an, in an institute, private institute. Mm, right. Thank you. All right. So Daniel says, uh, I'm teaching adults, a few teenagers, and my youngest student is 10. 
Mm. And their their levels are from A1 to C1. Belda said teenagers and adults. All right, wonderful. So it does look like we have some commonality here and that we're all teaching kind of those teenager or adult ages. And I hope that that will make um, this kind of case study of success presentation more applicable and relevant to you all too. Although we do feel what we're going to present today could be helpful for teachers of all ages too. So I'm just going to present kind of where um, this presentation came from and then I'm going to let Jasmine take it away because it's really her story and her work. But um, as you all know, we are in a world of so much technology. I feel like I learn about a new platform every day, a new website, and honestly, it gets to be a little bit overwhelming. Um, Jasmine and I have both felt this, and a couple challenges that we've noticed and, and she noticed is that all this technology, all these new websites we can use, these new apps, it really increases your planning time because you've got to learn how to do it, maybe move some materials into the app itself. And if you're not super comfortable with technology, you're working kind of outside your comfort zone and that can increase your planning time too. And we all know teachers usually go in above and beyond for their students, but I think we all know this past year and a half, we've really been putting in that, that extra work, um, much of it due to technology. And another challenge is uh, once Jasmine saw, got a little more comfortable with technology and was using it more in her synchronous Zoom classes, um, she started to see actually a decrease in interaction, meaning student to student interaction. The students weren't practicing as much by talking to each other in the class. So these are the two challenges, and I'm gonna let Jasmine go ahead and um, describe the steps she took to find success and overcome these challenges. So, hi everyone, and thank you so much for joining and being interested in our presentation. And I want to say thank you to Caitlin too. I am so happy to be presenting with her. She has been such a great support for me in um, to do this presentation, to give this presentation. So, um, at the first, I'm going. Uh, let's talk about the first challenge, uh, which was increased planning time and working outside uh, of comfort zone. So. Uh, we as teachers usually spend a lot of time on planning. I don't know about you, but I am this kind of teacher who is like maybe planning and then thinking about, oh, maybe these activities should go here or maybe I should move this one over here. You know, like sometimes we doubt and we spend a lot of time on planning. And what we wanted to do uh, was to to face this challenge. And you know, the, the way we're going to tell you the way we actually faced this challenge. So Caitlin, you know what? I cannot see the slides, but I am seeing them from, from the ones we shared together. So let me know. Yes, we're what... on the planning group slide now. Oh, great. So um, uh, we created a planning group with my colleagues. So we were, uh, we are teacher facilitators uh, of Ecuador Abling Bless. Uh, and we teach at the same level. So we were teaching B2.1 uh, and we set a planning group. Uh, and in this planning group, we have some meeting guidelines. So we know the group will work. I think, every, you know, everybody needs rules, even if we are children or adults, like for everything, for a group to work well, we need some rules. So the first thing we did is to set some guidelines, you know, like not as the law, but we wanted to be a um, nice and respectful group. So we have like um, these guidelines, like one facilitator uh, will be in charge of planning per week. So each of us will take the responsibility to plan for each week. We will meet once to review our plans, you know, so if I was the one who was in church, so I'll, um, I'll make sure like to set a time and to say, hey guys, we're going to meet this day. 
um, is everything available or let you know to our, arrange the meeting. Um, also, which is the time when everyone could attend, I think this was also really important because like sometimes someone could not be available, so we will be flexible in changing time and try to look for um, set time and a good time for everybody to be present when we pre uh, present each planning. So because we wanted to be inclusive and we wanted to listen to everybody's opinions and uh, contribution for the planning to be better. I've gone to the next slide, Jasmine. Okay, thank you, Caitlin. So our planning group shares some values, as I told you, to work well. And I think those values help us a lot during the whole program. So number one was wanted to help each other. So this was something that we want to do when we get get, um, get together for um, checking every, every week's planning session. So we the, the main aim was to help each other, you know, like, because when we help each other, we will have more time maybe for our own lives, lives and less time like spending on planning. So that was the idea to help each other, maybe saving time and also learning from each other. Also invite um, everybody to give us feedback. You know, I think we were, all of us were open to receive feedback from our colleagues. And I think this is really important when we work in a planning group because the main idea was not to be attacking each other, you know, as professionals, but the main idea was to receive feedback as a way to improve our lessons and as a way to help our students because we had our main aim really clear that was like making our planning better and making learning and learning for our for our students better. So I think we were open to receive feedback, we were open to give feedback, and we were open to contribute, you know, in the group. Also, we have this desire to learn from each other, and I think this is really important because everyone was contributing in the group with their knowledge. And we were also open to receive that knowledge, you know, because as teachers, we don't know everything, and we don't have to know everything, but um we should be open you know to learn from other teachers that maybe know more than we know so um we have this desire to learn and i can give you an example in here uh i was not a, a tech girl because like i i am not good at using technology so um last semester i thought i mean last cycle i thought a2.1, which was a different uh, group, and I didn't use um, that match um, technology, you know. I, I would say I only used Kahoot, and no more than that, because I didn't know and I didn't have a su um, supportive group like the one I have now. So I would say I learned a lot about technology because my colleagues would say, oh, why don't we use this app with this activity or why no why don't we use this other one you know so they they know a lot about apps and technology and i think they also inspire me and were a motivation for me to use the more technology in my classes you know so i feel more comfortable and more motivated because they were like you know excited to share some new technology app for the lesson. Another uh, shared value that we had in our group was a gay feedback sensitively. So, um, you know, we uh, sometimes when we receive feedback, if we are not open. We might think the other teacher is maybe attacking our lessons or attacking us. And I think we should be open, you know, to to receive feedback from our um, colleagues and also the way we give feedback, like using phrases like, what do you think about this activity or moving this one in here, you know, so we were very respectful with each other. I think that is something that makes us receive feedback in a positive way also and not feeling bad about us, but um, feeling good because I was learning 
uh, from my colleague giving me feedback, providing feedback to my lesson plan. Um, also, we were willing to try new things. You know, as I told you, I didn't use uh, too much technology. I didn't use much technology as I did this cycle. So they were encouraging, encouraging me to use more technology, you know, and I was like, sometimes like at the beginning, I would say, I would say no, I better ask my students to do this activity uh, on their notebooks because they think um, that was easier, you know, but having this group like motivating me and encourage, encouraging me and teaching me like, you know, we can use this new app was such a great motivation for me because um, this motivation um, made me say, oh, okay, I'll make the effort. I'll take this lean, which is already done. And I'll just apply it, you know, I, I think I can do it. And of course, uh, at the beginning, when we use a new app, we are facing this uh, challenge of my students don't know how to use this one. And this is my first time using this app. So there should be a little bit more of preparation, you know, a little bit before you use, you know how to use the app and our students know how to get into the link, for example. But I would say it's going to take a little bit at the beginning. And once they know how to use it, they are going to like the second time you don't you don't need to explain or you don't need to learn about it again so i would say we were all willing to try new things and also uh, those shared values allow us to work toward this main aim that was making our planning better making learn learning for our students better like i would say that was our main aim that we will have always in our minds that make the group work really well and we were um, supporting each other learning from each other um, providing feedback receiving feedback and it was such a great group you know and i think having a um, planning group was like a really good experience for me because this is my my first time having such a nice group you know yeah so i would say that and we have a question for you in here and i would like you to also share your thoughts about um what's another value that might help a planning group to work well what do you think like we have some values in here and I would like you to also share your thoughts with us and tell us what uh, what would be another value that might help a planning group work well. Please teachers feel free to to participate. You have the, the chat section to do so. You're more than welcome to uh, activate your microphones um this is in a way our own uh planning session so <laughs> uh we're eager to hear your opinion all right daniel says honoring timelines and deadlines and communicating if you cannot agree uh, agree to deadlines or attend meetings hmm, great i was kind of being flexible with time you know, not with deadlines because we need, we really need the planning for the next week, you know, but yeah, for presenting the planning and like being flexible uh, with time for the meeting. Yeah, I agree with that one. All right. Uh, Karina says empathy to provide support when needed. And Elizabeth says commitment to what we do for us and students. Yeah, commitment and um, empathy was like, something that we um, we had in our group and I think that's really good like empathy to say things to give feedback to provide feedback as I said and also the commitment commitment like really important value Aurora says respectful yeah 
absolutely like being respectful to each other when we want maybe an activity to be changed or to be moved all right uh danielle says i think flexibility was very important during the pandemic did that affect you in your planning group that's my um, question his question both together <laughs> oh no i i i wouldn't say that actually um we were like we are our program is virtual like because of the but i think it's been virtual nowadays like because of the pandemic it was virtual at the beginning but i would say like nowadays it is virtual i don't know Caitlin can tell us more but no i like we didn't what i want to say is that we didn't meet like you know personally before and like you know everything was virtual but yes we were like flexible with time like if someone couldn't attend uh, one day at a certain time you know what uh, we will talk to each other you know and look for a time like when everybody could attend to the meeting and contribute to the planning to be better i also remember jasmine you saying that your group at first was meeting on saturdays and then you all realized that maybe you didn't want to give up your Saturdays <laughs> that much. Like you were, you were flexible not only with individuals, but you were kind of okay as a group, just making those changes. Yeah, yeah, that that's true. Like at the beginning, we will set the time Sundays afternoon, maybe from three to four. But then we say no, we don't really want to spend our weekends on planning meetings let's wait like from monday to friday and then we change our um the time for our meetings all right uh thank you jeffrey says effective teamwork and norma says collaboration yeah absolutely yeah Kathleen, go ahead you go ahead oh please. yeah well i was i was just thinking about you know i think your team was so effective because you set out these values you know you had these shared values and even more importantly there was there were these two aims you know you're really trying to make your planning better making it uh the learning better for the students so i think when you can focus on those aims it's almost easier to like get together as a team because you have that goal um so i i definitely agree that that teamwork and collaboration and i see another comment came in love and empathy and i think i i not only heard that you know from you jasmine but when i would work with the other facilitators in your group too they never had anything negative to say it was always positive so those are all some amazing other values that you all uh shared in the chat thank you so much for doing that um, I'd love to continue by just touching on one thing that uh, Jasmine mentioned, one of these values of giving feedback sensitively. And I asked her when we were planning this session, you know, well, what did you all actually say together? What does sensitive feedback look like? How can you give it? How can you receive it sensitively? And she told me these phrases. So I thought, oh, this would be wonderful to share with everyone. You know, I mean, when when maybe someone gave feedback about a change or an adjustment, Jasmine said, oh yeah, I, I hadn't thought about that before. And I, and I love that you guys would just admit that and be like, yeah, that that is a new idea for me and, and I'm here to learn too. And so it's all about these new ideas. Um, and then Jasmine, you provided a lot of these other phrases for giving feedback sensitively. And I noticed a lot, there were a lot of questions. Well, what about, um, or maybe, you know, using words to show that I'm not telling you, you know, what to do, but I'm more just putting the question out there. And, and maybe people decide, everyone decides, no, we're not gonna make that change, but we can still put it out there. And so it's, it's worth the risk of giving your feedback because everyone was so, um, accommodating and sensitive and respectful to each other. So I just wanted to share these phrases with you all and, and you know, kind of plant that seed of, of you know, how the, just the smallest words or the tone of voice 
can make such a big difference with feedback. So I will go on to the next slide, Jasmine, and let you resume. All right. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, so, so sorry, before, before you go, Daniel says, I've noticed that the phrase, I wonder what would happen if, is used when suggesting an idea. Ah. Adding to the phrases that you're providing. Absolutely. I love that one because that, that wondering, it just puts it out there as that question. I love that. All right. All right, Jasmine. We're on the next one. Okay, thank you. So learning technology together was something amazing that happened to me because I um, went from using only Kahoot to using a world world, learning apps, quizzes, word art, Padlet, Google Docs, you know. So my inc uh, my knowledge in technology increased a lot. And that was only because my group would say, you know what, we can do this activity with WordWall. Uh, there's, um, there's an option that learn, um, allow us to do a matching exercise or a learning apps allow us to do um, classifying or ordering exercise, you know. So I will go from Kahoot to using all of these uh, technology apps and this is something we learn together and i would say that when we have a group contributions are really good and when you have an open mind you can try it you know and say yeah let's do that you know like let's change this activity that might have been boring if we ask our students to only do it on um, their notebooks and let's try let's try those new apps and the way my colleagues will share, they would say, you know what, I use this app with my other students and they really like it. Oh, why don't you try it? And of course, at the beginning, you might think as teachers, oh, a new app, um, it's gonna get more time for me until I learn everything. But I, as I said, being open to try new things really helped me. Um, and then also, um, it decreased planning time because maybe if you plan every day with all of these apps, it's going to take a lot of time. So having this planning group will decrease the planning time because, um, uh, like, let's say if I if I am in church of planning this week, I'll try to use different apps, you know, in my lesson. So I'll share just the link and the exercise or the activities ready, maybe in WordWall, just to use it. So uh, we will share links and we uh, we will have the exercises already ready to use for our students. So as I told you, we took turns planning week by week. So we will have those links with these apps um, ready to use. We share the load of learning new technology also, because you know, before um, starting the pandemic, in my case, I didn't I didn't know when I didn't use as much technology as I used today in my, in my classes. So um, also my group helped me to increase confidence to try new things. That This is really important too, because before I was like, on my comfort zone and I would say no I prefer my students to do it on their notebooks and that that will be easier for them and easier for me and that would be and we will be good but yeah like this group really helped me to increase my confidence to to try new things and to say yeah you know what let's try it if it works it works and if it doesn't work I will learn from it and also my students will learn from it and something that I also want to share when using new apps or new technology, um, we need to have on mind that maybe our students are going to get frustrated depending on the age and they might not like it at the beginning and they will need a lot of support at the beginning from our part, like to show them how to open the link, how to uh, do the activity or the exercise. So yeah, it's gonna take a little bit of time, 
But I could say once they know, they like it. And also it make it uh, the exercise a little bit more interactive. And okay. yeah. So, sorry, no, no, go on, go on. I, we have one question, but please finish, I'm sorry. Um, sure, um, I, I was going to say that um, a tip that I learned is that don't get frustrated and that is going to help your students uh, with, with um, a link doesn't work. Try to be calm, don't get frustrated because if your students see you calm, they will become also and you can, you know, teach them again or try to solve the problem and help them to use the link. And yeah, let's let's just have in mind even if, if an activity works, perfect. And if it doesn't work, we can still tell our students, you know what? And it didn't work, we can use our notebooks. So trying to be also flexible. So we don't make them feel frustrated and, and we don't feel frustrated as teachers also. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, Jasmine, Anna says, uh, thanks, Caitlin and Jasmine. I'm curious if at the end of the planning session, all the teachers, facilitators agreed on a plan and did you all use the same plan in your classes? Um, Anna, can you please repeat the question? Yes, it says, at the end of the planning session, all the teachers, facilitators agreed on a plan. And did you all use the same plan in your classes? Absolutely. Yeah, we all use the same plan. But, you know, um, we will be also flexible, like we all contributed. But once you have that plan, if, you're, if you see your students need something else, or maybe you think your students, let's say in a listening um, plan, let's say we plan seven activities for one hour. But if you think like maybe your students are not going to finish, maybe you might take one out, you know. So we will um, agree in our planning for the week. But once you have the planning, you will have the chance to also uh, adjust to your students and their um, needs. Yeah. Right. Thank you, I hope Jessica. I answered your question. So I think now Caitlin is going to ask you the question for the for the chat box, Caitlin. Am I right? Uh, yeah, just in this. Yes, of course, in the spirit of, of learning together, we have all these, you know, different websites and apps that that Jasmine has become comfortable with this year. And we're just curious, you know, what are some of the apps that you are using in your lesson plans, maybe the most right now? And then also kind of thinking about how did you learn to use them? Did you have others like a planning group or leagues that you could learn from? Or did you learn in a different way? So we'd love to hear a little bit from you all about this. All right, Lorena says some students get stressed because of the time limit. So it's better to avoid overusing online quizzes. They'll please use quizzes, but one quiz is enough. Uh, Danielle says, I have found great resources on liveworksheets.com. Saved my life in 2020. <laughs> yes, live worksheets are the best. I think that's an interesting comment from Lorena about the time limit too, and just maybe limiting how much technology. That's actually something we're going to touch on in our next part when we talk about the next challenge. So thanks for bringing that up right now, Lorena. Um, I don't know if I, if any of you have ever heard of Gartic phone. It's some sort of uh, like um, Pictionary meets the uh, I don't know I don't know the name of of that game in English. You know when you say something to a person with nobody else is listening, and then that person tell it to the other, and then misunderstandings happen in the middle. Telephone. Um, yeah, telephone. Thank you. Uh, yes. So this this is um, oh lyrics training Lorena says as well. I use that one too. Lyrics training. Lyrics training is so good. Uh, Chinese, Chinese whispers. Whisper. Right? Oh, yeah. maybe a good name for telephone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, this in this app, 
uh, you write a phrase, in this case, our target language is English. You write a phrase and someone, for what they understand, they had to make a drawing and then they show you a drawing and then you had to say what the drawing means. And at the end is hilarious. And I use it as, as someone for them to be entertained uh, and That's practice cool. the vocabulary. All right, so uh, Jessica says, these apps are fun. Anna says, I use Quizlet. Uh, and Jeffrey says, Mentimeter, Nearpod, yeah. Fambuzzle. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Karina says, sorry, before going to Karina, uh, Felisa says, Canva and Jamboard. And Karina says, Jasmine, what was the main challenge for teachers in terms of learners' English language proficiency? Um, uh, after the pandemic situation? It doesn't say. <laughs> Karina, if you could please be a little bit more specific. During, oh, during the pandemic. During? Uh, I would say, like, number one was um, learning. I mean, no, that is learners' English language proficiency. Mm -hmm. I would say um, the challenge for them was to, like, I would say communication was decreasing. So I would say the challenge in this pandemic situation was to use the language, you know, like not only in apps, but also like, because if we are in a face-to-face -face class, we can create different activities for they to speak and for they to communicate and for they to use the language. But I think during this pandemic situation, um, it has been difficult for them to use, um, to increase their speaking skill. I would say that. So we have been looking for ways that they still use the language to communicate, still um, um, like in, apply activities in which they can produce the language, not only in a written way, because sometimes I think with these virtual, um, with these virtual classes, like giving them activities to write, it's easier to find activities for they to speak. So I would say that that was the challenge that I have seen in my students. So as teacher, I was trying to face that challenge also to, to look for a space where they actually use the language in an spoken way also, not in a written way only. Yeah, what do you think, Aiden? Yeah, and I think that's actually a perfect segue into like our next challenge that we noticed. So thanks for asking that question because it really um, leads us into that. But I did want to mention before we move on, um, if you're seeing some of like new apps, new websites, you know, in the chat that you might want to try, maybe jot them down. Maybe you can split them up among some colleagues. You could all learn one and then come together and share just in that way of decreasing your your time spent on learning all this new technology so anyway yeah let's continue on to the next session does that sound good anna are there any other questions we're missing uh no uh lorena says i teach adults and they always want to use quizzes more than other online tools they enjoy it so much and karina and carla said thank you how nice yeah, I think there's something with going with what your students enjoy, too. There's no need to overuse technology. If there's some stuff that they enjoy, then that works also. So, yeah, like I said, that really brings us to the next challenge that um, this is a challenge that Jasmine and I noticed together, actually, was that the more technology was being used, the more apps that were being used, the student interaction was decreasing. And I think that goes to that, you know, proficiency, that speaking proficiency, maybe that was decreasing. Um, before we dive into that, though, we'd love to open a poll and just let you all kind of reflect a little bit about your confidence and how much you use technology or apps in your classes right now. So we're thinking more like websites or apps, like we mentioned in the previous slide. 
There are three questions here. Um, the third question I do want to make sure is clear that when we talk about student to student interaction, we're kind of looking for this, although we can't do this online, obviously where the tables are put together, but we can use some breakout rooms or other things. We're looking for students who are working in pairs or groups or things like that. So we'll give you all a few minutes just to answer that poll. I'm excited to see your answers. And the poll button is right next to the chat, I think. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. You can find it there. Maybe while the poll is opening, Anna, do you mind? I, I saw another question. Do you mind if I read Oh, it? no, go, go for it. I'm so sorry. No, no. Thanks for getting that poll set up. We appreciate it. Um, Diego's asking, how much do you suggest to use an app or tool during a class of 40 minutes? What do you think, Jasmine? Oh, so I think this question we are going to answer this question in a little um, bit about how much do you suggest to use an app or a tool during a class of four minutes. So I would say, and I am going to say it later, don't use too much technology in one lesson. Like for one hour, my suggestion is only two different technological apps, only two. For four minutes, I would say also two, like no more than that, because too much technology, I would say, is going to overwhelm our students. And yeah, what do you think, Adrian? Yeah, yeah, that sounds good to me. I think it also really depends on the students, who they are, their technology level. But as we kind of dive into this next challenge, we notice of student interaction going down, it's something that we have to think about is how much is the technology promoting communication and speaking and interaction and how much is it actually demoting it? So I think that's a great question. It might depend a little bit on the objective of the lesson, the comfort of your students. Um, but yeah, probably one to two in 40 minutes sounds good. All right. Uh, teachers, uh, all the questions are there. Please feel free to, to answer. And uh, Caitlin, Jasmine, this is our 10 minutes warning. Fantastic. We'll continue on then and let you all answer that. Okay. So should, should I continue, Caitlin? Yeah, yeah. So I'm on the next slide, Jasmine. Can all you right. see it now? You know what? Now I, I can see it. I can see now. Um, so now I, I went from knowing a little bit about technology until I get a lot of confidence on using technology. And with this new confidence, I felt um, so excited. I started using technology in my lesson um, plans and my, um, my class started to look like this, like kind of no interaction in my classes because there was too much technology maybe. And with the observation Katen did, um, Katen, that's your slide. You can go ahead, I think. Yeah, yeah, we, we did an observation together and um... Jasmine and I talked about how, you know, she had the support of her planning group and she really also valued having an extra set of eyes in her classes here and there. So one of the classes I was observing, I, I brought this up. I said, oh, I, I love because I knew Jasmine had struggled a little bit with technology. I was so impressed with all the technology she was using. I was like, wow, this has been such a big learning for you, Jasmine. But um, we kind of got to that realization that there wasn't as much student interaction. And she told me like, oh, you're right.
right. And I'm kind of forgetting the main aim of my class, which is really creating conditions where students can use English to communicate. So sure, they're still getting some English practice on some of these websites, but it's important too to promote that interaction. So when we were talking together, um, we talked about, we went through a, th a few steps and, and this is something that could be helpful for you too if you notice a challenge in your classes. So we thought about, you know, what do students already know how to do? Well, we knew her students could go to breakout rooms in Zoom and they knew how to share their screen. So that was wonderful. We also knew that her students who used phones knew how to go between two apps. So they knew how to have Zoom open and also visit another website or app and participate that way. So with that, we thought, okay, if we want more interaction, what might the students need more support with? And Jasmine told me that she felt like they might need a little bit more language to facilitate speaking in their breakout rooms. So if they were going to open a, a website or an app and share their screen in their breakout room and complete the activity together in a group instead of individually, then they might actually need some phrases or words to facilitate that communication. And she also told me, and we talked about how she had used many different apps in one lesson, and maybe that was a lot of learning for the students. So it was really important to become familiar with the new websites and that her students might need a little more support um, being familiar with how to open them, Sometimes they require a login, you know, each website's a little bit different. Um, so these are the, the things we discussed in our conversation. And I'll turn it back over to Jasmine to actually go through the, the exact steps that she took to kind of bring that interaction back up in her class. Um, so um, what I did to face this challenge was ask students to complete the website activity together in the rake of rooms so you know before i would just say okay now i am going to share the link for you to do this activity but i didn't realize they were working by themselves and i was giving them with the use of technology i was giving them a lot of activities um a lot of individual activities you know so there was no interaction there was not a partner for me to to ask if I am if I am doing um, well or wrong, you know. So most of the time they will do the link or they will complete the activity like by themselves, you know. So um, this time, Katie gave me the suggestion during the observation to uh, still use the same link, but send them to the breaker rooms because before I was using breaker rooms, but only for speaking activities, but. Um, whenever it came the time to use uh, the link, I'll just say, okay, this is the link and everybody um, were, were um, use the link individually. So Caitlin told me this suggestion about is still use the link, but sending them to Reiko Roms to complete the link in, in pairs or in, in a group of three, you know, so we can still make the activity interactive in a, coll a collaborative, you know. So um, the instructions uh, were, I explicitly um, told them one person need to share their screen, you know. So, okay, it's not about like, okay, we are in the Reiko room, you do it individually, I am going to do it individually, and then we just come for answers. But I tell them as an instruction to one of the students need to share the screen with a link open, and they should contribute to each other to actually work on that um, specific activity. Um, so also, you know, like another thing that helped was giving clear instructions before using the link. So I will teach them exactly how to open the link and what they have to do. Also, I'll ask questions like, uh, comprehension questions to see if they actually understood what they need to do with a link. And I think 
this help interaction uh, to increase and I also provide them some phrases because sometimes even as as teachers if we attend to a course if we are in a group we, we might say okay we are in the breaker room you complete you do your exercise I'll do mine and after that we can share so that is not doing an activity interactive so I share with them some language that they can use every time they will um, work on a link and I think this was kind of interactive language. For example, what do you think number one is? Oh, really? I am not sure. I think it's, I have dif I have a different idea. I think it's, I'm not sure um, what do you mean here? Or do you have anything to add? You know, asking this question, do you have anything to add? Will I will invite the other person who is in the breakout room with me to interact and to share what um, he or she thinks about the activity we are doing. So I think um, showing our students this skill about language to compare answers or language to make an exercise more interactive, um, help them to still use technology, but it's, it's still there is interaction in my classes because sometimes maybe we don't have this skill of um, sharing and comparing answers, you know. So I said we need to share this language that is going to help them not just working individually and just compare answers and go back to the main session. So I think sharing this language they can use when being in the breaker rooms help a lot to increase um, interaction. And also uh, balancing the use of apps, you know, like not because we are not in face-to-face um, -face classes, we need to use like one link for each of the activities, you know, and to have maybe 10, li 10 links in one class of one hour. So keeping a balancing, you know, uh, and I'll use only one or two links during my whole hour of class. That was also another helpful thing that I did and helped me to increase interaction and to keep a balance, you know, between technology, the use of technology, which is good, but the use of, in, um, you know, like promoting interaction, which is the main point when we are teaching a language. Uh, Jasmine, Lorena says, I also use online tools, GIFs and or GIFs and memes in class to promote uh, interaction. Yeah, that's a great idea also, because it's not only about like doing links, but it's also about asking them how do they feel or inviting them to interact. That is also a good idea. And um, breakout rooms started to look like this after I, I apply what I said, like less balancing the use of links and use this language to um, help them interact with each other. So there was more communication. I was able to assess the students learning because they were visibly active. And I will be continuing to do this next cycle of the program, you know, because now I have, I am more conscious about, I should keep a balance between the use of technology and interaction, which is the main aim of, um, you know, communication is the main aim when we teach a language. So yeah. And, and that's it. And we want to maybe ask, I mean, answer some questions you might have. Yeah, that wraps up kind of our presentation. Thank you, Jasmine, for being so open to share your story. I really appreciate it. Um, and we would love to answer more questions from you all if you have them. Um, Lorena says, we have to vary the interactions during lessons as it helps to keep students motivated and it gain confidence when they participate in class to achieve what they can help each other in group work or pair work. Mm, I love that idea of variety. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. So maybe a pair versus a larger group, the type of interaction you're gonna have is quite different. 
I don't know if teachers, you have any questions, anything you would like to say, you would like to share. Uh, this is your time to shine. Again, please feel free to drop your questions in the QA section, in the chat section, or you can uh, uh, ask, uh, oh, activate your microphone or camera. You're welcome to do so. All right. While you all are formulating questions, maybe, or maybe just thinking about what we presented, um, I'll just put up a, th a big thank you for participating and listening. Um, our contact information is here. If you would like to reach out to us and connect, um, we would love to hear from you outside of this presentation as well. Well, I also want to say thank you so much for um, being interested in this topic. Thank you for all your, con uh, all your contributions also. And, and Kevin, thank you so much for all your support and for uh, motivating me to be in this conference today. It's been such a pleasure to work with you, Jasmine, as always. <laughs> all right. Uh... Karina Thank says, you, Anna. No, <laughs> my, my genuine pleasure. Uh, Karina says, thank you so much for all your effort. You're doing wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Thanks a lot, Jeffrey and Fabiana and Wilmer. And Jessica says, thank you for very, for very interesting information. Thanks so much. I will have to say that too, because um, as a moderator, I was also, you know, being part of this. Uh, conversation, this presentation, and it's something that I haven't thought about it. Usually when when a teacher is planning, we are pretty isolated. You know, like we cater to our comfort zone, we cater to our children, and never have I thought of doing it with somebody else. And it was like, ah, oh, this is interesting. So thank you so much for sharing your experience. I think I might talk to my coordinator to apply this. <laughs> yes, yes, Fabiana, the videos will be available in the replay section. You have on the left side of the platform, you have reception, stage, sessions, networking, booth, and the replay section. Uh, all the videos will be uh, available there. Yes, there will be, if I'm not mistaken, after a couple of minutes until it uploads, it will be, it will be updated there. Um, oh, I have a question. I'm sorry. I haven't seen it. Uh, we have, ooh, we have a lot of questions. So Danielle says, I find that this can be a little bit challenging to do on a long-term basis. How long have you been doing this, uh, Jasmine? During this whole cycle, since um, April, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, since it's, April, this cycle is started in April, right, Kevin? Yeah, is the this the group planning? I'm a little curious to know more about that question. So, uh, Hi, Caitlin. Is here. Hi, Yasmin. So, Hi. yeah, I actually put something in before that. Um, and so the, my situation is I teach kids individually and teenagers individually. Um, so I try to incorporate technology as best as possible, um, but I can't really have a lot of, you know, student-student interaction if there's only one student in the class. So um, I was wondering if you had any ideas about how I could use that with students. And I don't want them to feel like I'm giving them a homework assignment. I don't want, you know, they're, English class with me as a freelance teacher, as a private teacher, to feel like an additional hour of school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's making me think about, even though it isn't obviously synchronous, but the, the ability to do some sort of asynchronous interaction. Like I'm wondering about, you know, a, a platform like Canvas or something like that, where even though you have individual students, they could all be in a class together in canvas and you know participating in some discussion boards or something like that 
or even something like Flipgrid doing video, um, it kind of asynchronous participation though, because I'm not sure, Daniel, are all your students in the same time zone also? Uh, yeah, they're pretty much all in Chile. Um, the thing okay. is, they're, there are different ages, there are different levels. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think there's there's definitely some of those more uh, platforms that promote the asynchronous interaction. There's likely room for that even at different levels, you know, and one person's post could turn into a reading class for another student or, you know, if it's a Flipgrid video, a listening, something like that. Excellent. Um, yeah, I've heard of Flipgrid, but I haven't really thought of um, exploring that. It's fantastic. I highly recommend it. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Daniel. Um, Amelie also says, do you use apps at the beginning or after the lesson? Jasmine, Caitlin? Oh, I think Jasmine might be frozen. Oh. I have a feeling. So, oh. Oh. Jasmine, are you back? Jasmine? Oops. Well, oh, <laughs> you're on mute, Jasmine. I should answer from what I saw in her oh, classes. Can you hear me now? I think she'd be better. Yes, yes, Jasmine, now we can. Okay. Yeah, my internet um, went off for a little bit. I, I couldn't hear everything. But I would say my idea is what about, for example, using Padlet. Padlet has this option of recording yourself and maybe have that wall for all your individual students so they don't feel like, oh, I am talking only myself in this wall. So maybe Padlet has this um, option of recording yourself and maybe you can create that wall for all of your students so you have the, they have the opportunity to listen to each other even though they are in like uh, taking classes individually they can interact with other people who are also learning english i could say that is my idea i don't know if that sounds good um okay and the the, the other question oh sorry daniel go ahead it's okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what you were saying, I think that that could possibly work to get some interaction happening amongst the students with yeah. Padlet. Um, that is something I have used in workshops. And while you were speaking, um, there was another really good comment in the chat. Um, someone was talking about MMORPGs. Um, I imagine that's type of uh, an acronym for online RPGs, role playing games. Um, and so I do know that some of my teenage students really like those types of games. So um, that's something that I can definitely ask them about. So thank I'm you, so Fabiana, glad. for that suggestion. Yeah, I'm I was so glad you knew what that meant, Daniel, because I was like, what is that? <laughs> I, I know RPG is role playing game. I think MMO is something like massive. Okay, there we go. Fabiana, massive multiplayer, massive online, multiplayer RPG. online. RPG. Very cool. Oh, Thanks. I, I didn't know also. I am happy to learn. Uh, I didn't know yeah. yeah, excellent. And the last question, because we had to wrap up, teachers. Thank you so much for your participation and your questions. Uh, Amelie was saying, Jasmine, that you couldn't hear. Uh, do you use the apps at the beginning or after the lesson? Mm, like, I, I said I use two apps, like, but I'll see like in which part of my lesson I will include. Like I cannot tell you I always include it at the beginning or I always include it in the middle. Like we will, with my group, we will see like where is best for our students to use like technology. Yes, but I, I, from what I've seen in your classes, Jasmine, is that you're using them during class as opposed oh, yeah. to after for like a homework assignment or something. Oh, yeah. Always uh, during the class. Okay. All right. Uh, teachers, thank you so much for your questions and for joining us today. Caitlin, Jasmine, thank you so much for your wisdom and for sharing us with us.